and welcome to our instructional series of videos. In this installment, we're going to show you how to create a RAID volume using Soft RAID 8 for Mac. Before we start, we've already installed Soft RAID on our computer. We'll be using Soft RAID 8 on Sonoma in this example, but the basic instructions should also apply to other versions and OSs. It's recommended that all the drives that you're using in your RAID array be the same size and model. Mixing brands, sizes, and types can result in lower performance. Keep in mind that this process will destroy any data already on these drives. If there are already files that you want to keep on the drives we're making into a RAID, you'll need to back them up elsewhere. Because of this, we recommend performing this operation on a computer with no other drives attached. Otherwise, unmount and disconnect any drives besides your boot drive before beginning. Now, let's get started. Before we create a RAID volume, we'll first want to certify each of the disks. This contributes significantly to the safety and integrity of your data. After making sure all other external drives are disconnected, connect your enclosure or enclosures with the drives you want in a RAID array to your computer and turn it on. If they're brand new drives, you'll get pop-ups for each drive saying they need to be formatted. You can go ahead and click ignore for each of these as we'll be doing that with Soft RAID rather than Disk Utility. Next, go ahead and launch Soft RAID. In the Soft RAID window, there are two halves, the disks half on the left and the volumes half on the right. Right now, we're going to look at the disks half. These are all the physical drive units connected to your computer, which, if you disconnected all other drives before starting, should just be your boot drive and the drives you want to make into a RAID. In this example, you can see the boot drive and the four drives in our Thunder Bay. To certify a drive, select the drive, then go to the Disk menu and select Certify. Another reminder, this will erase data on this drive, so if there's anything on the disk you want to keep, copy it now before proceeding. A dialog box will appear with a short description of the certification process and options to change some parameters. However, we recommend using the default settings. Go ahead and click Certify to begin the process. You'll be prompted for a username and password. Enter those and click OK and the process will begin. As you can see, certification can take quite a while. Fortunately, you can certify multiple disks at once, so go ahead and do the same thing for the other disks you want in the RAID. While we usually suggest you let the certification run its course uninterrupted, if, for some reason, you need to temporarily stop the certification to work on something else, you can. Simply select each drive that you want to stop certifying, right-click, and select Cancel. To start again, just perform the same steps as you did before. This time, you'll be given a dialog asking if you want to resume the previously interrupted certification or start over. You can then pick up where you left off. Go ahead and let the certification run its course. As we mentioned before, this may take quite a while, so you may want to let it run overnight or over a weekend for even larger drives. Once certification has completed, you'll get a dialog box for each drive with the results of the certification, including any errors that the drive may have returned. Your drives are now certified and are ready to be made into a RAID volume. First though, we'll need to initialize them with Soft RAID. Select the drives you want to use in your RAID. Command clicking will let you choose more than one at once. Then, go up to the disk menu and select Initialize. You'll get a dialog box asking you to confirm initialization, then be asked for your username and password. Enter those and click OK. After a couple of moments, the drives will be initialized for Soft RAID and we're ready to proceed. Go up to the volume window and select New. You'll be presented with a window that contains the information required for all RAID modes supported by Soft RAID. The first thing to do is decide what kind of volume you want from either the icons at the top or the drop-down menu to the right. 
Soft Raid supports several different raid levels, each with its own unique benefits. For more detailed information on each type, visit go.owc.com slash softraid slash raid levels. Once you've decided on the raid type, we can move on. For this demonstration, we're going to go with a RAID 1 plus 0. From the disk list on the left, select which drives you'd like to use to create your soft RAID volume. Use shift click to select a group of them and command click to select or deselect individual ones. All the drives you have selected will have their indicator lights flashing. Next, give your RAID volume a name. We're just going to call ours RAID volume because we're creative like that. Next on the list is file system. HFS Plus and APFS are the standard Apple file systems, with APFS being the more modern. APFS is better for solid state drives and HFS Plus is better for platter-based drives. If you have a specific reason to change it, such as a time machine drive requiring APFS to work, you can, but the default setting will work perfectly well for most use cases. Next is optimization. Soft RAID will optimize the setup of the RAID for the best performance in a usage scenario. We're going to use this RAID for video, so we'll set it to that. Volume Safeguard is a soft RAID feature that helps protect your RAID from accidentally being erased or damaged. When this box is checked, soft RAID will not allow you to erase the volume or a drive used to make it without first manually unlocking it in the software. The last thing to look at is volume size. While you can change this if you want, in most cases you'll just want to set it to its maximum size. Once everything is set how you want it, go ahead and click Create. In almost all cases, you'll be asked about Stripe unit size. The default setting has been determined using the drives and usage optimization we chose earlier. Unless you have very specific reasons to change it, it's generally best to go with what has already been selected. For RAID Type 1 and RAID Type 1 plus 0, you'll also get a dialog to select which driver drives will be the primary drives for the RAID. If you're mixing drives with different ages, speeds, brands, or the like, you'll want to choose the fastest or most reliable drives as the primary. If all the drives are the same make, model, size, and age, such as with a brand new enclosure and drives, then this distinction is less important. Either way, you can select the number of individual drives, in this case two, by command clicking them. Like before, the selected drives indicators will also flash, showing which ones they are. Once you've selected these details and have clicked OK, your RAID volume will be created and will eventually show on the desktop. At this point, your new RAID volume can be used just like any other external drive.